Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as you can see, it is finally out. Chapter 5 of Fatal Force is here, and I am ready to get back into it. Guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 20 minutes, and let's just, in it, just, just enjoy this. Oh, this is one of my favorite VNs. It's hilarious, it's funny, it's sexy, it's heartwarming, it's all kinds of great. Alright, so we'll start at the very end of chapter 4. Alright, let me start my little uh, alarm chant. Alarm chant, where are you? There you are. Okay, and let's begin. Okay. <clears throat> well, <laughs> uh, hello again. Hmm. I'm sorry about my behavior earlier. Ooh, did that get an artwork pass? Well, let's move on. We're gonna go back four years again, though you'll be remaining as Nary. Man, first day! I already hauled my butt as hard as I could through high school, but it was worth it. I could finally join the Academy. Stella Academy. This is the place where most people come to study in the field of forensics, or at least that's what I've heard. Most of the lectures are by ex-FBI, retired police officers, the Army, and private detectives. The Academy does host other professional courses, of course. Courses, of course. Like cooking, art, modeling, and literature. One day, I'll become a great detective. I took a deep breath and continued walking to the academy. Guys! I saw something! Huh? It's a bear! It's Bjorn. God, I hope it's not Brian. I swiveled my head. I didn't see a bear. Instead, I saw a big kid. They were mocking him. Oh no! I'm scared! A bear's coming to the academy! Leave me alone! Go visit a zoo, big guy. There you'll meet so many of your animal people. <laughs> I could tell he wanted to fight back, but didn't know how to. Meh, whatever. Not my problem anyways, though that intrigues me. Animal people? What do they mean? Like, are they talking about the zookeepers? Hey, stop it! He tried to fight back, but was blocked by two other guys. Seniors. They're bullying him. Seems that everyone else is trying to avoid the situation. Is no one really going to try and stop them? Ah! The seniors pushed him onto the ground and started to kick him. Okay, that's fucking it. I bolt at them and elbow one of them to the ground, pushing both of them back. Hey, what the? The other one tried to punch me in the face. I quickly dodge him and side slam him with my backpack, forcing them to the ground. I held up my fist at the others. This academy is a code of conduct, don't you forget? I'll gladly make you all buy one-way tickets to Expelled Town. Now scram! Scram! They all scrambled to their feet and darted off. Guess that taught them. I turned back to the big guy. Oh, He's still struggling to stand up. Hey, are you alright? Yes, thank you. But just keep in mind that you're probably going to be their next target, I'm afraid. Ah, who cares? Besides, this academy has no discrimination rules, so we'll be safe. Has a no discrimination rule. I smile and reach out my hand. He grabbed it and got up. He's pretty heavy. So, uh, what's the big deal earlier? Working part-time as a zookeeper? Zookeeper? He gazed at me for a bit, confused before he suddenly started to chuckle. Well, what's funny? I just heard them mumbling about animal people and things. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's, uh, it's actually related to furry fandom. His tone dropped sharply and he seemed afraid. Furry? Sorry, I'm not exactly familiar with what that is. Mind explaining to me? His face lit up slightly. You've never heard of it? Are you sure you want me to explain? Yep. I see. Well, I'm not really sure how to explain it. You'll probably laugh at me over it. Why so? Essentially, the furry fandom is about people who have an interest in human-like animals. Some folks join just for fun, but others want to create an identity that is free. No restrictions, like an animal. A second self, I guess. So, basically an alternate personality as an animal. Yeah, you could say that. Interesting. Tell me more about it. Huh? huh? I mean, you have me hooked now. I'm rather interested in this furry thing now. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. Oh, uh, sorry. I should probably ask now. Uh, what's your name? Brian Thompson, but you can call me Timmy. Ah, Nary. Nice to meet you, Timmy. Likewise. <laughs> Four years. He's been my close friend all that time. The one person who I would go to when it came to the furry fandom. 
Even on a bad day, we're always there for each other, getting through everything that got in our way. And now he's gone. Poor Timmy. Did he really kill off Timmy? This final year of my studies has had possibly one of the most tragic times of my life. Tragedy? Why? Why does tragedy always come from a bad thing that is always beyond any of our control? It feels so empty inside me now. I feel lost. It feels like my soul has already died. Nary, are you alright? She was waving her hand in front of my face. I shook myself awake. I realized we were still standing in front of the academy. Yeah, I'm fine. I just need a moment, please. Sh sure thing. Sorry, Nary. She smiled gently at me. Everyone knew that the one person that was close to Timmy was me. The sadness refuses to leave, and I'm still trying to accept all of this. This isn't fair. Something feels wrong. Suddenly, a policeman began to strut in our direction. White fur. <laughs> what the fuck is this JoJo pose? Oh my god, I love it. Kids, you shouldn't be lingering here. Please move. Uh, sorry, sir. We, we just arrived here. What is this music? Oh, your students said this is stupid academy, huh? This conversation was getting really weird. I did not realize who they're looking at. <laughs> he keeps shifting to the side like a cardboard cutout. <laughs> Perhaps they think he just looks like an ordinary police officer, though. Is it obvious? Is it not obvious he's fake? It must be because of Draviar, so he's disguised as a human to let him act like a police officer. Well, except for me, I can see the real him. Perhaps my werewolf ability? I, I think we should go now. Class is getting started. She began to quickly walk towards the main gate. Linda followed suit. Hugh! Boy! Follow me! <laughs> he gripped my hand and dragged me with him under a tree not far from the academy. My mind is still blank and unable to respond to what he did, what he did just now. Ugh! I have glass, though! Mickey lets go of my hand. Yeah, right! Going to class with a tear-soaked face? The hell's with your deal? The hell's with your deal, anyways? Dude, my friend is dead, and you want me to act normal? I was roaring, but it seems Mickey didn't care. Instead, he pointed his gun at my stomach. He snarled at me with a small fang sticking out slightly. You see, I'm not your gentle type guy like Draviar. I get really pissed when someone like you makes him too blind to make even a simple decision. He was furious, but why should he be mad at me? That's not my problem. I can't control what he thinks with his stuff. But it is my problem. <laughs> Are you jealous of the way Draviar treats me? Hm? He stared at me, shocked. He pulled away his gun. Jealous of you? Why? Why should I be jealous of some brat bastard like you? He glared at me formidably. You should have known that what happened earlier could have been settled so much quicker. Are you teaching me? Or just a warning, more or less. Javier always covers his, up his mistakes by saying everything was just part of his plan, especially yesterday when he told you to stay in the car. What? What you never realized was that I missed my first shot, so I had to take another shot with the black gun. Are you telling me Draviar is lying to me? Well, no. Technically, he's just not telling you the full story. I, really? But I still don't get it. You said you shot twice, but I heard the sound of only a single gunshot. Mickey suddenly raised his gun and pointed it at me. W wait what are you doing? Shut up and look carefully. I stared at his gun. It was black, but I noticed its shade of color was shifting slowly until... Oh my god, it's a white gun! Wait, interesting trigger on that. Huh. Looks like a, it looks like a water gun trigger. It's white? My gun is a name, Stargazer. It has two functions which are distinguished by its color, black and white. They're the same functionally, but when it's white, the shot is dead silent. Not even a werewolf can hear it from point-blank range. It has a major drawback, however. It takes a day or so for it to regenerate its ability once it has been shot. Why are you telling me all this? To remind you that Draviar has been treating you like you're his king, despite every stupid move you make. If you weren't, you might not even be alive and standing in front of me right now. What? As a king? You're not going to like this, especially because this is something he's been trying to hide from you. I can feel my hands sweating and trembling. I keep staring at him dead in the eyes. He's being serious about it. 
Was that what happened last night? Majavir had grabbed my hand tightly and not let it go. <sighs> Don't leave me again, I muttered to myself, looking at Mickey. He could hear it. He took a small breath. The reason why Dravier has been treating you like this is because... B because? You remind him of someone. A specific someone that he loved the most, only to lose them a long time ago. W what? I stared at him in disbelief. Is he joking? L left him? Well, I say it's like it's fault, but in reality the better word would be abandoned. That person ended up abandoning Dravier a long time ago. Turned him into basically a stray street dog. It nearly turned him insane. And now he gets to meet the same face, but from a different person. What's the term? Uh, oh, that thing. Cases where people share nearly identical facial features. It's called a doppelganger. Yeah, whatever. That's besides the point. You better watch out, kiddo, because people might die because of you. Oh, so you're telling me Timmy's death is my fault now? He had depression. People would constantly bully him. Even his parents didn't care about him. Mickey forced my mouth shut and smothered it with his hand. His claws were almost digging into my face. Memento Mori. Two songs of desperation. And lastly, the Lone Wolf's Revenge. <laughs> it's like Kenny. <laughs> I couldn't say anything at all. My mouth was still kept shut. The expression on his face changed as he said that. Well, I've already figured out one part of it. The two songs of desperation were the ones Mickey already mentioned about in the hall during the senior student lecture just yesterday. Memento Mori. Mori is death. Memento. Memory. Remember how you die. Which means that someone was dead, but now resurrected? And Revenge of the Lone Wolf? Draviar, does he want to pay back through me because someone else who shared my face betrayed him? This is all confusing me now. Just too much stuff for a single day. Mickey slowly and gently released me. He closed his eyes and left me alone between the trees, and at the blink of my eyes, vanished. Fuck you, Mickey. Oh, my feelings are messed up. First sadness and now confusion and anger. Those two wolves keep using me like they're a lab rat, especially Draviar. God, why did life have to go this way? Do you really want to go this way? Because we can go this way. Weren't we just going this way? Props to anyone who gets that reference. Such despair. Nonetheless, I forced myself to join class, just slowly dragging myself through the lectures. My mind can't absorb anything, even if I want it to. It's a complete mess. And that is all for today. Mr. Anderson, welcome back. We've missed you. <laughs> Make sure you finish up the last remaining questions on page 210, or else someone's going to be stuck in my special jail. See you all tomorrow. Special jail. Also, Nary. Huh? He, sta he startled. He startled me awake as if I was daydreaming. Y y yes, sir. Could you stay for a bit? We need to talk. Uh, okay. Mr. Anderson's my professor who taught law and crime investigation. He's also my mentor who was supposed to meet me along with the rest of my assigned group yesterday. I sat at my desk and waited for the rest of the class to leave. Mr. Anderson slowly approached me. He sat next to me and gave me a warm smile. I could barely look at him. You doing all right, Nary? I couldn't help but notice your behavior was off today. Rather, how would one say it? Like someone sucked all the life out of you. He chuckled and patted my shoulder. I'm not sure anymore. I see. I'm sorry for your loss. He was a good friend of yours, was he not? Uh, huh? I heard pretty much everything about you guys, especially given you and the others are put under my care. It is true, it is a true shame that I was not even given the chance to introduce myself to you people before those two left us for what may lay beyond. Well, I heard you were sick yesterday. Well, that, honesty be given, is not true. I simply had a rather tough day preparing everything for this year's schedule, which tuckered me out quite badly. I'm actually quite surprised that the Academy did a mentor project this year. Yet, this is not quite what I wanted to talk about. There is something that has been itching me about your friend's untimely demise. I turn around and look at him, my eyes wide open. I look hard at him, making sure he wasn't just poking around with me. What do you mean by that, sir? Do you recall the report the police had regarding your friend's passing? It said that he killed his parents, set the house ablaze just before committing suicide. Don't you notice what's so odd about that? Why go through the trouble of setting his house on fire and then proceeding to hang himself? And 
Who would know he was the one that set fire to the house just hours after investigations began? I'm sorry if I'm overstepping here. I know this might be a harsh topic right now. And it seems so odd to me as a doubt if he fled anyone would have thought it was him. No, it's fine and, well, yeah, this is weird. Because the report also doesn't state anyone actually witnessed it. Precisely. Isn't that peculiar? It just seemed to happen randomly and spontaneously, with such great detail with no one to see it happen. Unless someone faked the report. Well, no, we can't be absolutely certain yet, but that is one of the possibilities. The case is still under investigation as we speak. Let's just hope that it gets settled soon. Mr. Anderson smiled at me. So he's telling me that something about this could be fake. So that means that Timmy might still be alive. I, I think I know what to do. Thank you, sir. Hmm. All right, then. Just take care and stay safe, Nary. I get up and begin to walk out. I turn back to him. He seemed a little worried. I wave at him and return a warm smile. Now I need to find someone... Now I need to find some place that could contain the information I need to crack this. I'll have to take a deeper look and look for the unexpected. At the library... Meanwhile, in a building not far from the academy, a kilometer maybe, or one, I don't care enough, miles. <laughs> okay, look, I'm not great with distances. It's like two blocks or something from the academy. Someone is lurking. Ha! Ha ha ha, humans. They're always so amusingly naive. Those pretentious little brats always think they're right. No wonder they won't stop sparking wars against themselves. I sure hope you're not going to regret this one, Draviar. Because the price you'll have to pay will be nothing short of agony. <laughs> Part the skies and listen to the roar of the innocent one. May Solus beam past the world. Reflect against the moon and give light to the land. With the birth and death of the Aluna times, hear my prayer. Secret technique, Art of the Wolves. Blood prison. Ugh! Why... I... Why do I feel sleepy? Now, back to the main character, who has been dashing to the school library. My heart is pounding. I've never felt this kind of adrenaline before. I slid to a halt in front of the door of the library. It's located on the fifth floor. I'm honestly not sure why they chose to put the library near the top floors. After four years of being in this academy, this was the first time I've entered the library. It's not that I was too lazy to visit this place before. It's just been a lot more convenient to browse for information I need or want out of curiosity through the internet. Often, with just a single quarry, I can get everything I need. But something tells me that the answers I'd need this time have yet to be revealed anywhere on the web. I'll have to browse manually through undocumented records and books which might be able to help me solve the mystery. I grab hold of the handle and pull open the huge library doors. Well, that explains why this place is situated on the fifth floor. It extends another three stories up and just... Damn. That's a lot of books. It's going to take forever for me to search for the information I need to find. Hello. How may I help you today? Oh, she's cute. A lady showed up almost from nowhere. What is with her hair, though? What is with your hair, lady? It's like one part of your head has bedhead. She must be the librarian. Ah, yes. I was looking for something about old cases. Rosabelle Lilith. God, these people's names. Very anime. <laughs> old cases, as in old records. Yeah, I need them or something. It's uh, for my assignment. Yeah. She chuckled at my weird behavior. Well, you appear to be a new face. First time entering the Academy Library? Y yeah. Pretty much. I begin scratching my head and peer around. There's basically no one around. I see. I can't blame you. Nowadays, the internet has pretty much replaced what the library can provide. But of course, the internet is full of misinformation and untrusted sources. People nowadays cut too many corners and run into traps to resolve their problems, like confirmation bias. Anyways, as for you, wait, please wait for just a moment. Wow, look, like I, got, I, got, I got some, uh, extra, I got some extra frames. That's pretty cool. Extra character poses, that's nice. She ran to a nearby counter and returned with a paper and pen. Here, please fill the information of the records you inquire about. Name of the document, writer, date, place. Just try to fill it the best of your ability. I'll try to see if I can find it. There's a table over there, so you can put the paper down there to write. Hey, how about giving me that number, lady? How about giving me that number, Rose? <laughs> hey, 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 ain't above. Hey, she's a cute librarian. I ain't gonna say no to that. <laughs> Once you're down, just return to the counter, and I'll be waiting there. 
But thank you. I take the paper and pen and walk towards the table. I lay the paper down on the desk. All right. Let's see. First off, Javier mentioned Hellish Lake and the brutal murder related to it. Of course, there's going to be a brutal murder at a place called Hellish Lake. I'm going to have a. I'm going to have to dig deeper on this case. <laughs> what do you mean horrible things happened on Trauma Mountain? <laughs> it seems I can no longer trust Javier fully because of the clever way he uses words to hide things. Last year, records of Hellish Lake murder. I look back to the librarian and hand her the paper. Here, this is already all I need. This is all I really need. All right, guys, I'm gonna save it right there. Yes. Oh, I love this game. More of it. Yes, more content. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.